today we're going to learn about gas graphs. Yes. Well, when you see a graph like this, what does it mean? That's what we're going to talk about today. Well, first of all, what type of relationship do you think you see here? As we increase temperature, which we see on the x-axis, we see the volume gets bigger. So an increase in temperature means an increase in volume. This is a type of relationship we'd say is direct. When do we, when do we see this with the ideal gas law? Let's look. So here's our ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. And we've also rearranged it to this to say P1 times V1 is equal to N1 over T1. And then if we change the situation, P2 times V2 over N2 times T2. Well, what things would have a direct relationship? So first of all, N versus P would. If, and this is saying these are the two things that change. You're changing number of moles and pressure, but you're holding constant volume, so you have a rigid container. You're holding constant temperature, so the molecules are not moving any faster. But if you have a rigid container and you keep adding and adding and adding more molecules, the pressure is going to go up. An example of this is a bicycle pump. If you put pump air, more gas molecules in there, it goes, the pressure goes up and up and up. It also works in the other direction as well. Next direct relationship, T versus P. Let's say you have an aerosol can, you heat it up, and you heat it up, and you heat it up. Now it's a rigid container, same number of particles in there, but those particles keep moving faster and faster and faster. As you increase that temperature, and they keep going faster and faster and faster, and hitting with more energy and more energy, that pressure is going to go up and up and up. That's why you don't put an aerosol can into a flame. It could explode. You don't want an explosion. So that's a second direct relationship. So maybe you see something going on with our formula here. If we have one variable on one side of the equation, such as temperature, whoops, such as temperature, we see temperature right there. And if we have the other variable on the other side, such as pressure, those would be a direct relationship when they're on the opposite side. So if you increase one, it increases the other. Let's look at other things that have direct relationship. Number of moles and volume. So for this, you need a flexible container, like something with a piston or a balloon. So what we're holding constant here is temperature. We're not making the molecules go faster or slower. And pressure. So if it's in a piston, there's no pressure moving up or down, so it's freely to move. Or it's a balloon working, it can expand. So pressure is not changing. So, number of moles versus volume. So if you pump, pump more and more particles in there, that volume should go up and up and up proportionally. That's called a direct relationship. There's one more direct relationship in this formula, see if you can see it, and that's temperature and volume. So how does that work? Okay, so temperature and volume. So temperature means we have a rigid container, and, I'm sorry, uh, volume is, is flexible, so that means we don't have a rigid container, so it's something like a piston or a balloon. But, and, and pressure is, uh, is variable, so for the, I mean pressure is constant, so this means it could be a balloon or a piston, so there's nothing more pushing down on it. But what is the same is the number of moles. So let's say you have a balloon and you heat the balloon up. What does the balloon do? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, or you cool the balloon down, it gets smaller and smaller. It's, the number of moles is constant in the balloon because it's an enclosed container. And the pressure is constant because it can expand or contract. That would be an example of another direct relationship. So how does this look in a graph? Well, we also, before we do that, let's look at the things that would show an indirect or what we call really an inverse relationship. And they'd be variables that are next to each other in the equation. And for the things that are inverse, it'd be pressure and volume. We see this with Boyle's Law. If we increase pressure, the volume gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But the, but the volume actually never approaches zero. So we say this is an inverse relationship. So look, let's look at some examples. Temperature and pressure. See, at a low, low temperature, low, low pressure. But as we increase the temperature going this way, we see the pressure equally going up. This is a direct relationship. Let's look at another one. Volume and temperature. Temperature's increased from 0 to 100. Now, what, what's important here, and I'll show you another slide later that shows you this, is this is Kelvin. It can only go down to 0 if it's in Kelvin. That's why we always change to Kelvin. But if, we, if you change it to Kelvin and you look at volume, there's a direct relationship. Now, we know we never get ab to the zero, this 0 right here. I'm not sure if you know what that is. That's absolute 0. So if we got to absolute 0, that's something that's approached, but we never actually get, get there. 
let's keep going. Uh, this is an illustration of increasing uh, the temperature. So you increase temperature in a rigid container, the molecules move faster and faster, same number of molecules, but the pressure keeps increasing and increasing as the temperature goes up. So this is another direct relationship. Now no, notice a rigid container. Now gas laws, this is, a, this is a summary of the things we see at gas laws. So notice the difference in the first two graphs. One goes to zero, the other doesn't. Now the reason the first one goes to zero is that it's at Kelvin. The second one is at Celsius, and so it would have to intersect and then go down to minus 273. So that perfect graph only exists, graph only exists if, if you're at Kelvin. Now sometimes we also see there's a, a linear relationship, and this is when you take a pressure divided by temperature and then you increase the temperature. Or you could say pressure divided by pressure and then their pressures increase. That is a, one of the times you see a linear relationship. A graph of Boyle's Law, now this is where we say we inverse relationship. Now a graph of an inverse relationship would look the same like the first graph we see here. So this is what we simply see. We see Boyle's Law pressure and volume. Notice as you increase and increase the pressure, the volume gets smaller but never actually approaches zero. And as you decrease and decrease the pressure, the volume gets much, much larger. Now we could actually take pressure and the inverse of volume and see a direct relationship that we really don't usually talk about in that sense. But notice pressure times volume is a constant and so that way if you increase volume pressure times volume is always going to be the same number or if you increase pressure pressure times volume is always going to be the same number because P times V is a constant here. So when we see this at P times V that is a constant. A couple more. So which of the following graphs correctly represent the relationship between pressure and volume of an idle gas that is held at constant temperature. Hopefully from our brief discussion you can pick out that this would be B. The correct answer for this would be B. Alright, let's do another one. Which of the following graphs correctly represent the relationship between uh, of an idle gas that is held at constant temp temperature when it's uh, between temperature and volume? Between temperature and volume. Hopefully for this one you selected D. This would be the relationship between temperature and volume for D. Which of the following would represent Boyle's Law? Now hopefully you remember Boyle's Law is this. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And with pressure and volume you should know there's an inverse relationship and so hopefully you would pick a graph that looks like this. One more. Now, the last thing I'd like to close with is, is when would you have a linear relationship like you see here? An example of that is, let's say we put something like density on the y-axis. And we put something like volume here. This one will work in this situation because you, as you increase and increase and increase the volume, the density is going to remain constant. Uh, also, we could put something else we could put on the x-axis would be N, which represents number of moles. As you increase the number of moles, whether it's a small or a big number, the density is going to remain the same throughout. So a linear relationship like this would apply anytime you have a number that when you change the other variable, be it x or y, does not change at all. Hopefully that gives you a good start to work with, gra uh, with graphs that have to do with gas laws. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.